These days, air power is the key to winning battles. But fighting on your own doorstep is one thing. Fighting a war on the other side of the world is another. So how do you do it? Well, you're going to need one of these. carrier. In a modern navy, an aircraft carrier is the most important warship in the fleet. It's a floating airport, city and battleship all rolled into one. This aircraft carrier is a fearsome warship and a technological marvel, but it's only possible thanks to some unlikely engineering legacies. The power of a hearing aid. Was doing its job. <laughs> There's a very good chance we might all surprise this. A boomerang. No, it's not. An agricultural seed drill. Oh! Nothing would have gone through that. One of London's most famous landmarks. Three, two, one. <laughs> that was a lot of energy in one hit. And the space race. operational 24 hours a day in a war zone, it's not easy. When an aircraft carrier sails to war, it takes a whole battle group of destroyers, frigates and supply ships with it. Its primary role is to launch combat aircraft to strike enemy targets hundreds of kilometers over the horizon. To achieve that, it's crewed by over a thousand men and women who live and work within the confines of the steel hull. Below decks, an aircraft carrier probably looks and feels much like any other warship, but its, its main role, of course, is very specific. Its job is to be ready for its aircraft to land or take off at any time. And that means it's very important to keep the deck level. I can understand how it'd be a bit tricky if the deck was being tossed about violently on a rough sea. But in fact, if it's any more than five degrees off the horizontal, nothing flies. And that's not much use if you need to fight wars anywhere, anytime, and in absolutely any sea condition. Illustrious weighs 22,000 tons. She's big. And one of the biggest challenges is to keep her flight deck level at all times. The best place to observe this is from a helicopter. Not the problem on an aircraft carrier. You come up here and suddenly your sense of perspective undergoes a subtle shift. Because yes, an aircraft carrier is a very, very big thing. But so's the sea. And it's easy to imagine how. She could be thrown around all over the place by a rough, violent sea, and yet somehow, Illustria seems to sail on serenely regardless. How does she do that? Well, largely thanks to four stabilizers, two at the front and two at the back, and they sort of fly her through the water, and they all come courtesy of the boomerang. Hugh Hunt, a full-time engineering lecturer at Cambridge University and part-time boomerang expert, should be able to show me why. Hugh! Hello, Richard. I've brought my boomerang. Very good. You call that a boomerang? Well, that's what they said when I bought it. Yeah. No, this is, this is a boomerang. Well, that doesn't look anything like this. Well, yeah, you can sort of imagine, if I've got a couple of ordinary boomerangs like this, you can imagine, you stick two of them together. Yeah. And it's sort of X-shaped like this one is. And, uh, you know, the original boomerangs from, you know, Aboriginals and so on. 
were boomerang shaped, but we can make them more efficient and more interesting if we do them like this. So you're going to teach me to throw one. Do I learn with that one? You could, but no, I'm going to give you a beginner's boomerang here. This is more your size. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Okay, fine. I'll put my boomerang down there and I'll use yours. Yeah, um, right. What do I do? I've never done this. Right. So, yeah, well, you find the wind sort of that way. So you go yes. 45 degrees around to the right of the wind. Right? Yes. And in a vertical, up and down vertical plane, you throw the boomerang. Now you've got to give it lots of spin. Here we go. There we go. So give it a good spin. There we go. It comes back. Catch it. Hey. <laughs> it was what were you doing? You weren't watching. Concentrating. Wow. So, you could have caught that one. So let me just do this once more. Yeah. Okay. And then I'll ask around. what's actually right. happening. Because what is. Why does it do this? Right, well, this is behaving like a gyroscope. Now, the gyroscopic effect is really pretty interesting. Whenever you have a spinning object, spinning object naturally would like to stay spinning about a fixed axis. But it's only when you make the blades wing-shaped that it returns. That aerodynamic design causes the boomerang to curve as it spins in flight. No. You're going to throw that? Yeah, I'll give it you a go. You might kill a man. It's quite light. Made of balsa wood, it's It's fairly flexible. Oh, I think that's probably for the more advanced boomerangs. Yeah, right. Well, I'm gonna, I'll it's give this a go it. and... Uh, all right, here we There's go. a very good chance we might all survive this. No, we're not. Without an aerodynamic design, a boomerang would just spin in the vertical plane and fly in a straight path. And then there's the gyroscopic effect. It's this effect that helps to make the boomerang stable and accurate over a long distance. The faster a boomerang spins, the greater the gyroscopic effect. It's what made original boomerangs great for hunting. This is a handmade Australian um, boomerang. Um, and um, it actually isn't meant to come back at all. Um, it's much more like a hunting boomerang than sort of this fun returning boomerang. So I can throw this and this is going to go way over there. So you select your prey and you throw that at Well, it. the idea really is that imagine you, you're you hungry, right? And there's a flock of birds. Yeah. And um, you could creep up on them, maybe, but they'll fly away, right? right. So uh, you, might, you could throw a rock. But if you've got something like this, which has got a bit of aerodynamic lift to it, then you can throw it further, spinning like mad, and it moves around, and your flock of birds is... Well, and you're hoping to hit, you hopefully hit yeah. a bird with it? Really, I just want this to, to get there and startle the birds, and they're going to they're take off, and hopefully I'm going to take one out. Well, so. hit a bird with that. Yeah, that's, that's ambitious. Go on, then. So, well, you, you hit so. a tree. Of course, this gyroscopic effect is not limited to just boomerangs. You've got to grab one side of that tray for me, alright? Let's get this spinning top going. Alrighty, eh? Now that wants to stay spinning about the axis, and we can tilt the tray. Oh, I see, yes. And it still stays It spinning. wants to stay level, yeah. It'll stay spinning about the same axis. It doesn't matter what we do with the tray. The top stays spinning in exactly the same upright position. And it's this behaviour that allows the aircraft carrier to keep its flight deck level. <laughs> to show how it works, I've built my own gyroscope, a spinning disc free to rotate in any direction. It is important to remember, isn't it, that it's not moving, we are. Just like the spinning top, it stays spinning in the same axis, however the truck moves underneath it. So there it goes, it's turning around, or at least to us it's turning around, but it's not turning around, it's the, it's the truck that's turning around. And uh, so we're able to detect our motion relative to that. So in other words, it wants to stay exactly where it is, doing what it is, in space. And we are now moving around it, but it stays where it is. And by being able to measure the difference in movement between the gyroscope and truck or ship, we can compensate for that movement. 25,000 years ago, the gyroscopic effect was used, unknowingly, in early boomerangs. But today, gyroscopes have many applications. And here, on this battle-ready aircraft carrier, the gyroscopic effect is put 
to a very specific use in keeping the whole ship stable so that aircraft can operate from the flight deck in pretty much any sea conditions. This is the ship's gyroscope room. In here apparently there are two different gyroscopes. Simon, I can't find 